Hi, this is my testimony. It's called How I Got Called and Came Unto the Knowledge of the Truth. My name is Carl Coates. I am a Bible believer. I rightly divide the word of truth and I read from a King James Bible. If you've ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you would understand that if you were reading in the Gospel of Luke, Luke gives a very detailed account in his Gospel uh, presentation. Then if you go across to Mark, it's very short and tense, to the point, and, and before you know it, the 16 chapters are over. This testimony is going to be based off a of Mark style, short, sweet, to the point. I was called saved by hearing Paul's my gospel Romans 2 verse 16 you'll read there my gospel I can't remember which saint it was I can't remember what denomination they were from but I got presented the Romans road to salvation on more than one occasion if you're looking for a time and a particular date when it happened to me uh, I heard it the one particular time it was in December of 1992 at Port Shepson High School but uh, um, there was no fireworks, hallelujah, Wah! this is what's happened. No, it wasn't like that. It was a thinking game, a thought process. Hey, I'm a sinner. You know, the Bible, and the Bible just says it outright in Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short to the glory of God. Hey, I'm a sinner. You know what? But God had a plan and a provision. You just need to read one verse on down, Romans 3.24, you see it. And then... I, 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 had to re, I had to have a one-time respo uh, uh, response of faith, which I did. I believed and trusted and, and now rest in that Jesus Christ hung on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, was buried, rose again the third day. As simple as that. I trust that. I rest in it. I believe it. And I've passed from death to life. I was a sinner. I'm now positionally a saint. And it happened the, the moment, the instant I trusted the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. So that's that's how I got saved. I got called by Paul's my gospel. Someone presented the gospel to me that number one, I was a sinner. Couldn't wiggle. Couldn't. I, I, I violated God's uh, um, perfect st uh, um, standard of righteousness. I violated. And 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 if I wasn't doing that, I couldn't live up to His holy standard of righteousness. There was no wiggle room. None. None whatsoever. So I was a sinner. Now I had a choice. I could have, I could have gone, ah, whatever, and walked away. But I didn't. I couldn't walk away because I'd pay for those sin, that sin debt, in hell. I'd go to the judgment, uh, the, the great white throne judgment, and then later on I'd be tossed into the lake of fire for all eternity. No, man. Jesus Christ gave me a free gift, and I accepted it. <sighs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now the second part I want to quickly get, get onto is. How I came unto the knowledge of the truth. It's one thing being saved. That's the first part of Timoth uh, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. That's the first part. But the, but the, the important part, the, the, the next phase, if I can call it that, is coming to understand the distinctions in the Bible. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 2. You start to see the distinctions and, and in, in its basic form. The prophetic and the mystery. And I started to see that I, uh, there was a, 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 I toured Egypt, Israel, and Jordan a number of years ago. And on the way back home, I met I met a saint, a Bible believer, that that just uh, he met me where I was at. He didn't come along and thump me in the head and say, "Carl, your denominational belief system's wrong." He didn't do that. All he did is he he went, "Okay, you've just come back from Israel. Tell me, Carl, the Abrahamic covenant. What do you understand about that?" And, you know, and if you've studied that before, you'll know that there's a couple of things going on with that Abrahamic covenant. For an example, an offshoot, the Palestinian covenant, which is about the land, the Davidic covenant, about a throne and a dynasty, and then the new covenant, which is out there, your future. Um, um, so he, he presented all that type of, he, he, did, well, he presented it in a nice, gentle fashion. Many months later, we still were in conversation about it, and I had a lot of questions coming out of that denominational movement. And then all, all what took place was, the brother sat down there with an open with, an, with his open King James Bible. The questions I had, he answered back from the scripture. He let the word of God do the work of God, as a mature saint would. He didn't argue back. He didn't go, oh, you know, oh, none of that. He just let the word, he just gave me the scriptures. And I came to see that Paul, you know, in, in this very basic form, I saw the prophetic 
and I saw the, the, the mystery. I understood that, for an example, one quick example, that I didn't paint tithes. Tithing, that's an Israeli thing. That's Israel's program. If I, wanna, if I hear a good message or something, and I want to contribute to that ministry with a cheerful heart, go for it. But to be told you need to pay your tithes because if you don't pay this, this that's going to happen. It's that fear, uh, uh, um, if you do this, then you get that and, and you can't have that. That's that's the law break. We're under grace. Anyway, so that, that's what all transpired with, with me. I got, I got called by Paul's my gospel and I came unto the knowledge of the truth when a grace believer, a Bible believer, help me to understand and see the distinctions in the Bible. And lastly, with a little couple of seconds I've got left here, because this is, I need to get going. Oftentimes people will say, you guys chop up the Bible, you, you rightly divide the word truth brew, and you throw away stuff. No, we don't. No Bible believer that understands Pauline truth. No Bible believer that, that believes that the church, the body of Christ started in Acts chapter 9 when Saul got saved ever throws any one of the 1189 verses away we read they read we collectively as the body of christ we read genesis through revelation we do not throw away one word but we do know that romans to philemon those 13 epistles were written to well in my case to me to carl coates paul wrote to me the, the, the design for my edification is there anyway if you've not trusted jesus christ as your lord and savior why not do it now what is stopping you from doing it right now just believe think about it you're a sinner you by the time this this hour's out you would have violated god's holy standard of righteousness righteousness or you would have failed to live up to the mark either one there's no wiggle room if you've not trusted in jesus christ and his death burial and resurrection paying for your sins mr miss your sins why not do that right now it's a free gift there's, there's nothing you can do to earn it nothing nothing it's a free gift think about it you're a sinner there's a provision the lord jesus christ who hung on calvary's cross died was buried rose again the third day and then there's that one-time response of faith that you need to do and just believe in your heart and faith demands privacy that's my testimony i hope you've uh, i hope you have wherever you are in the world whatever you're up to um take care hope you made the right choice now and as the old saying goes, I'll see you either here, there, or in the air. <laughs> Maranatha.